When we ordered our 2019 Subaru Ascent in August of 2018, I ordered it with the factory installed trailer hitch. I usually order all of my vehicles with a factory installed trailer hitch and towing package. The more we got to thinking about it, the more we thought, well, it might be nice to return to RVing once again. When our family was growing up, we had pulled a bunkhouse with a Suburban all throughout the Midwest and visited a lot of great places. We thought it'd be really fun to start doing the same thing with our granddaughters. We knew that the Ascent was somewhat limited in its towing ability with a maximum towing capacity of 5,000 pounds and a maximum tongue weight of 500 pounds. Our new travel trailer had to have just a few certain qualities. It had to have a north-south bed or possibly a Murphy bed. It had to be able to sleep one or two granddaughters and it should be easily pulled by our Subaru Ascent. After months of research, we settled on the Coachman Apex Nano 187RB. It had everything we wanted in a small couple's travel trailer and we settled on Halet RV Supercenter in Coldwater, Michigan to be our local dealer, even though it's 103 miles from here to Coldwater. This is a walk around of our Coachman Apex Nano, June 21st, 2019. It has not been on a trip yet, I just want to give an overview of the trailer. It was built on May 5th, 2019. To give an idea of what the lights look like on it in the evening, I rolled the awning back out this evening. This afternoon I had to clean out the gutter along the awning because there was a lot of debris from trees in there, but this gives a good idea of what the trailer looks like with the lights on. This trailer was built on May 7th, 2019. This is the roof. My initial inspection did not show a problem. But, right over here, over the refrigerator, is a problem with the vent. This is the view to the rear. And after taking the video of the missing caulk in the vent screw hole, I cocked it. This is the front of the trailer. A single tank cover has been added and there has been a battery disconnect connected to the battery because three days after I got it home the battery had been connected and it was dead. Approximately one month after we have the O peeling from the windshield. This shows how the battery disconnect was added to the top of the battery box. To use the battery disconnect, the cap is lifted, the key is inserted, and it's turned to the on position. There's now DC power in the trailer. Then, turned off, key removed, and the cap is replaced. This is a close up of the O peeling from the trailer. I pressed the O down to see if it would stick, and the stick on graphics started to crumble. 
I dabbed some white paint into the O to make it look a little bit better. And I also contacted Coachman about possibly getting a replacement O. An LP gauge was added to the LP tank. Right now it's showing nothing, but it's the LP is turned off. Rust is starting to form on the brackets for the LP tank, as well as around the front. It is also starting to form underneath the A. This is how the bungee cords are attached to the bottom to hold on the LP tank. And I'm looking for some of the rust that can be seen down here on the bottom of the trailer. Some of this is dirt, but there is rust. This is the driver's side. I did a thorough inspection and at first I thought everything was okay. And then I found a problem with this kitchen window. What appears to be white caulk is actually DAP, DAP Dynaflex 230 clear. And it's supposed to change color. The problem was there was rain coming in the window pane. Not around the frame, but the pane. The frame itself actually is not fitting well in the window. It's not flush to the side and neither is the front window on the campsite. This is the driver's side, the pass-through storage door is held up by a magnetic lock. Down here are the scissors jacks for leveling. They're sitting on a Lynx leveler at this time. This is the front stabilizer jack. Showing the attachment. While I'm down here, this shows some of the rust that is on the frame. This is the rear driver side stabilizer jack. Notice how the screws are driven in at an angle. This is the rear stabilizer campsite jack. Notice that one screw comes down from the top, the other screw comes up from the bottom. The one screw on the right is not fully seated. This is the front campsite stabilizer jack attachment, which is entirely different than the other three. This is how the stabilizer jacks work or don't work. Actually, nuts and bolts. I wanted to replace the poorly working scissors jacks without removing the mounting plates for them. Removing the mounting plates looked like a lot of work to me. Getting wrenches on the bolts and self-tapping screws on the mounting plates and trying to mount new mounting plates seemed like a lot of work. Eventually, I found out that I couldn't do it, but that's another story. 
I removed the rear campsite scissors jack from its mount during my investigation. I found that the outside bolt holding the scissors jack to the mount on the trailer was shorter than the inside bolt. Someone had cut off some of the threads of that bolt. I have no idea why. The wrench shown in all of the photos is a half inch open end type. The outside bolt required two half inch wrenches to remove it. One wrench was used to hold the bolt head so that it would not turn and one was used to remove the lock nut. The lock nut on that bolt was not really holding as well as the inside bolt's lock nut. I believe that the lock nut was on the outside bolt when someone cut off part of the threads and that the nylon insert was damaged in the lock nut. The half inch open end wrench could not hold the head of the inside bolt. The wrench opening was too small. The inside bolt head required a 13 millimeter wrench to hold the bolt head and a half inch wrench to turn the lock nut. The photo shows that the head of the inside bolt does not fit in a half inch open end wrench. The bolts were physically different. All of the rest of the bolts and the other three scissors jacks were like the inside bolt in the campside scissors jack. The next video shows the poorly working rear driver side scissors jack. The front scissors jack work equally as poorly, but I did not video them. This is how the stabilizer jacks work or don't work. This is the fresh water fill for the 30 gallon tank. Coming up is the exhaust for the furnace. This is the back of the refrigerator. It should be noted that the hubcaps are plastic. The outlet for the 30 water gray tank, 30 gallon water gray tank and 30 gallon water black tank are here. The nut and bolt on this bracket were difficult to tighten. It had come loose. The short power is hooked up at this time with a removable cord. Right here is the six gallon hot water heater. And down here is a switch for turning it on using electricity, shore power electricity, or just on propane. Over here is the outside shower. The outside shower appears to be the only access to the water pump. The outside shower would have to be removed to access the water pump. There is no access to it on the inside. It's behind the water heater. Connections for satellite cable TV, city water connection, and the black tank flush are located here. The black tank flush is only available on the Summit package. I discovered this campground. There's no washer in the black tank flush. I've added a washer to the black tank flush connection. On our camping trip, both of the low point drains leak, so I tightened them. Down here is a sticker that says, you're responsible for your seals. Check them every 90 days. Note that the label says, refer to the owner's manual. No owner's manual comes with the trailer. There's only an interactive owner's manual and a PDF file of the owner's manual 
available on the Coachman site. Following the power cord around. There is a 110 volt AC coming out of the garage into a 30 amp adapter that I purchased and then into a surge protector circuit analyzer that was provided by Halet RV. This is the back side of the camper where we've added a spare tire cover. The spare tire bracket has rust on it. Let's see if I can get some shots in here of it. How about over here? There's several spots of rust that can be seen on the bracket. Not a good sign. And why this sticker is like this, I have no idea. This is the campsite of the trailer. And on first inspection, didn't appear to be too much wrong. The door has a little problem. If you try and pull on the lock, oh, I pushed in. If you don't push in and try and pull on the lock, you can't open it. You have to do like I did on the first try. Push in with your thumb on the door and then the lock will open. This video is going to be hard to shoot because what I want to show is difficult and I have to keep my fingers out of the lens. I hope I'm getting this showing that this frame is not set flush into the wall. Also, these steps, like all steps of this kind, are extremely hard and difficult to get out. This video shows the features found on the campsite with the awning out. When I rolled out the awning this morning, a lot of water was falling out of it. It was not rolled up in the rain, but we've had a lot of rain here, so rain must obviously manage to get into the awning. Here we have the two AC outlets, one hooked up on shore power. There are two speakers with LED lights in. There's an LED light strip that runs along the awning. Down here we have the 14 inch wheel and tire with the plastic hubcap. The brand is Lion's Head, made in China. The only information that came with the trailer was a warranty card to return to them. The trailer does have Asdell in the walls. On all trailers with these types of steps, they're hard to get out. Clankety bank, bank, bang, and they come out. Then you wrestle with them to get them back in. There is a nice campsite window at the dinette in the front bedroom window. The other pass-through storage door with magnetic lock found on the Summit model. The stabilizer jacks. This is not for leveling, just stabilizing the trailer. There are four of them sitting on a Lynx leveler. And there's a port here to plug in a solar panel. It does not come with a trailer. It says solar on the side. My wife has chosen to add a new shower curtain to the bathroom just because she liked it better. The medicine cabinet at this time has nothing in it, lots of room. The cabinet under the sink has a scrub brush for the toilet and a scrub brush for the floor in it at this time. 
there's an oops on the water faucet on the right hand side there is a blemish we didn't notice it when we purchased the trailer on July 29th I swapped out the marred original stock faucet for a new Pfizer faucet which added 1.6 pounds to the total trailer weight the difference between the two faucets it also allows us to get our hands under the faucet to wash our hands and right now I am checking for leaks and I'll leave the city water on for the rest of the day moving back around to the wall This is the indicators for the fresh gray and black tanks and the relative battery strength as well as the switch for the water pump and the water heater is turned on here. There's a nice towel rack that was provided with the trailer. And we added the toilet paper roll next to the plastic foot flush toilet. There's also a bath mat rug for in here in the bathroom. The back storage closet has paper products and the coffee maker with coffee filters on the top shelf. The middle shelf is all of the towels and washcloths and at this time the bottom shelf is empty. Could possibly be for our granddaughter or for us to store more stuff. The hanging closet is empty at this time except for the broom and the dustpan. The shelf or the storage under here is full of essentials for the trailer. The access panel down here is for the shutoff valves for the water heater. The shower in this Apex 187 RB does not come with a shower surround. It does have a nice skylight. The shower pan has trim around the top and that trim was caught by Coachman. There was a seam between that trim and the shower pan that was not caulked. I decided to caulk it with damp white bathtub caulk. Josh the RV nerd notes there are reasons to have a shower surround and not have a shower surround in some of his videos. We added a tension rod to hold a mesh shower caddy. For traveling, the Happy Camper Welcome Mat sits on the floor of the shower. The sewer box with all the sewer hoses and stuff in it sits on top of that. The two camping lawn chairs fit right across the bathroom. The Rhino Tote can actually fit in here if we do need to take it along with us. Items for taking care of the sewage include a 21 gallon Rhino Tote Tank, a 25 foot Rhino Flex Sewage Hose, and the shorter hose goes to the Tote Tank. 
The short regular size hose also is used for cleaning the tote tank. There's a metal bar for hauling the tote tank. There are gloves for handling the sewage. There's a 90 degree elbow. There's a 90 degree into the sewer hookup. There's also a 45 degree elbow and an adapter. And there's also with the yellow tube on it, that is a spray device for spraying out the inside of the sewage hose tube. The reason the sewage hose tube is not in the bumper sewage container is that it's too big. It's a very small, it would take a very small sewage hose to fit into that bumper. When I originally did the check out of the trailer, I took this panel off and there was a lot of debris behind it. This is the access to the water heater. The water pump is located right down there, which makes it very hard to access. The wood here, with only having this panel off once before, is so soft the screws are not actually working. I'm going to replace those screws with some bolts and blind nuts. The screws that were originally in there I've replaced with one inch long 632 bolts, blind nuts, and washers on the outside. This is a panel under the fuse box. During the walkthrough at Hewlett RV, I pointed out to Norm that it was missing a screw. He said he'd replace it, and it was not replaced. I did replace it with a screw I had at home, but now I'm going to replace both those screws with the bolts just like I did in the bathroom. This is the inside of that panel under the fuse box. It too had a whole lot of debris that I vacuumed out of there. This is the panel under the fuse box after I put in the bolts and blind nuts. And while I was at it, I also did the access panel that's under the microwave. I'd never had it off before and when I opened it up I was pleasantly surprised that it was clean under there. There were two physical problems when I got the trailer home with the refrigerator door. The first problem is a mar. That is a mar on the door, not something that can be wiped off. The second problem was that this panel right here is movable and it slides in front of two pins in the bottom. Well whoever put the panel in put it behind a pin so I had to go up and take the top of part of it off. Lift the panel up and then work on getting it in correctly. Right here is the pantry. Three shelves. Gorilla Grip shelf liner on all the shelves waiting for our pantry items. Up here is storage. We have a griddle, first aid kit, tablecloth, and what we affectionately call our junk drawer with all the stuff you find in a junk drawer. The freezer compartment has is nice and big for this size trailer and we put a thermometer in it the same with the refrigerator the refrigerator has its own thermometer and we have an RV refrigerator fan in there to move the cool air around and help it cool moving over to the two burner stove top sorry about that 
um, we added the lid for it, which serves as a backsplash. Pretty cool. Microwave is down here. Furnace is down here. We store the pots and pans, silverware down here. In this store, we have wastebasket, silverware, and a divider. Over here, we have our pots and pans. We also have knives and that kind of stuff. We have a box full of cleaning and kitchen supplies. This is the two bowl sink. There was a problem when I first got the trailer. The faucet did not run parallel to here. I'll try and show a picture that I captured of that. There is still newspaper and tape at the window. I'm checking to make sure that my fix worked. Up here, we have a kitchen towel hanging there. Paper towel. Storage containers, bungee cords, stuff for the kitchen. I purchased an 18 inch cutting board and I cut the top part. I put that top part right on here on the bottom to act as a spacer. Sorry about that. And it goes in here just like this. It does wobble a little, but that's okay. It's here. They add countertop space, and this is where we will set the coffee pot. The cabinets over the dinette have been lined with Gorilla Grip shelf liner. The AM FM radio is there. That's the actual time on, this, on January 24th. Over here, we have bowls and cups, napkins, etc. The dinette area is a good size. The table is one of the largest in this size trailer. The campsite window is not too bad. The cushion on the top back bench is velcroed to the wall to keep it in place. When the dinette is made into a bed, it is approximately 72 inches long and 36 inches wide. We found some sheets on Amazon of that size called for a twin sleeper sofa. They're in our cart and will be ordered. This is the compartment under the back bench. When it came in, it was screwed. The top was screwed on it with two screws. I removed the screws. There's an access into the shower pan. There's also a lot of wiring in there, but we are planning on carrying like the bedding for this dinette in there. It shouldn't be a problem. Down here, we have a hard to reach 110 volt AC outlet and the LPCO, carbon monoxide detector. On this side, the bench has a door which is part of the Summit package and it is compartmentalized a little bit so there's quite a bit of storage under there. The only thing that's under there now are some marshmallow skewers and cables and electronics type stuff. This started at the end of the June on the kitchen window, on the dinette window. I tried blowing air to clean out the track, 
but that didn't work. I'm going to try some lubricant now. I discovered that it's not the track. I lubricated the track and that did nothing. I uh, found out that it's actually when you unlatch the window, let it go back in, and move it, the part of the window latch that's rubbing on the window is what's making that squeak. If you hold it out the whole time, it doesn't squeak. But if you just go like this, grab the window, it squeaks. I cleaned the window many times using invisible glass. That didn't help. I tried to uh, use dry lubricant on the part of the latch that touches the window. That didn't help. You still get the... But if you hold this out, that's the solution. This is the bed with a new bedspread and some pillows that my wife has added. The TV is shown in travel mode. There is nothing in the shirt closets or the space above. So there's nothing to show there. The TV mounts over above this window but it will be in this position during travel the TV mounts on the wall over here the red light on the far left shows that the TV boost is on this is a view of the television from the bed this is a view of the television from the kitchen area I'm backing up to sit down on the bench and the view from the bench. And of course, the other bench will have you'll have to turn around if you want to see something on it. But while cooking, it should be very easy to keep the television on and watch the news. For the refrigerator to work well, it must be level. Coming in and using a level to get the trailer level is a little difficult not impossible but I have been using a level master pro that mounts to the side of the bed the level master pro allows me to make the adjustments outside the trailer using the application on my phone this is the under the bed storage with a simple lift I made for it using a piece of one by two eight foot piece of one by two pull just goes down and rests upon the corner just rests in the corner and then comes up to here where there's a piece of velcro on the bed on the uh, and then also on the end here the velcro is just kind of to hold it in alignment and that bolt there is what actually holds the aligned hold that holds it on top there and I can get things in and out easily. The plugs and switches in the bathroom include a ground fault, AC plug, a light, the gauges for the fresh gray black and battery the water pump and as noted before the on off switch for the hot water heater coming into the main part we have the thermostat for the furnace another light and the lights are push button on off there's no master switch. There's a light under the sink. 
there is a light over the end of the bed and the front part of the bed. There is a working smoke alarm right there. Down here we also have a fire extinguisher. Over here on the cabinet, the dinette, we have the on-off switches for the exterior lights and the awning on the far left in black. And then coming back around one more time, over here there is a an AC outlet down from the sink where the coffee pot will plug in. Up here are the cable and satellite connections. You see outlets up here. Then down here we have, sorry about that, we have AC and USB plugs on this side of the bed and on the other side of the bed we also have AC and USB plugs, but they're down here. This AC digital voltmeter can also double as a nightlight. It's a good way to check the AC voltage in the trailer. It was just a little bit too much light for us. Many of these small travel trailers come with a 13,500 BTU air conditioner a lot of the time. They uh, are proud to show them off, but they're not so proud to let you hear them run. I'm going to just kind of hold this back here, reach up, turn this puppy on. is the air conditioner on low. Oops, I'm sorry, that's low. That's not too bad. Oops. That's low, the compressor just kicked back. Medium. High. It's not exactly what I would call silent. what the air conditioner sounds like and laying my head on a pillow in the bed. Pretty noisy, but it sure would beat the heat some nights. My desired tongue weight is in the neighborhood of 400 pounds, which is 80% of the stated maximum tongue weight for the ascent. All of the specifications are based on the manufacturer's literature and trailer placards. All of the noted weights were measured using a CAT scale, a local state of Michigan certified landscape scale, and my physician's scale purchased from Amazon. The physician's scale can weigh up to 550 pounds. In November 2018, my ascent with me in it and a full tank of gas weighed 4,700 pounds on a CAT scale, but I didn't have the ball mount on it nor the towing mirrors. I did have on a heavy jacket in November that was not on in July. The CAT scale number and landscape scale number verified each other well. The tongue weight calculation using the landscape scale in my spreadsheet calculations based on the individual weights that I had entered also verified each other. The tongue weight was also verified by the physician scale as 479 pounds. The numbers all came out reasonably close. I shifted a lot of the weight around. The shift involved reducing the pass-through storage weight from 79.3 pounds to 38.6 pounds, a reduction of 40.7 pounds. The 2 by 10 by 40 and 3 quarter inch treated lumber leveler and the Anderson leveler, 6.4 pounds, were moved to the bathroom storage along with other, several other small items. Only the Coleman grill was left under the bed while the drip pans and grates, the grill brush and the patio mat were moved. 
The grill grates and drip pans, along with the grill brush, were moved to the storage space under the front bench. The patio mat was moved to the bathroom. Before we left on our first camping trip, July 22nd through July 24th, the total trailer weight was 3,685 pounds, and the tongue weight, measured with a physician's scale, was 421 pounds, or 11.4% of the loaded trailer's weight. Even with a lot of the weight shifted around, I still had to add 5 gallons of water, approximately 42 pounds, to the black water tank to achieve the 421 pound tongue weight. This is the trailer with the ADCO 34 840 cover on it. I just put it on today to see how it fits because it's the first week in July. Our first camping trip was to Groveland Oaks Campground on July 22nd through the 24th, 2019. The facility is an Oakland County Park, approximately 30 miles from our house. My wife, granddaughter, and I had a great time at this very nice and family-friendly campground. The weather was pleasant for the end of July in Michigan, with only one brief rainstorm on the second afternoon. The ascent had no problems pulling the trailer there and back on the state and county roads. It was, for the most part, flatland towing on suburban roads with no freeway driving. There were only a few minor hiccups discovered during this wonderful outing. The mattress felt too hard to my wife, but perfect to me. The difficult-to-use height and placement of the spigots on both faucets was discovered. The low-point drain leaks were discovered and fixed by tightening them. The missing hose washer in the black tank flush connection was discovered. The loose bracket on the tank outlet connection was discovered. At home, after our trip, a hose washer was added to the black tank flush connection and the tank outlet bracket was tightened. I cannot see why I wouldn't buy another Forest River product. I had been forearmed about the quality issues with all of today's travel trailers. I can't imagine that the trailers produced by others would be any better or worse. Maybe I would purchase another Coachman travel trailer if it seemed to fit my desires at the time. I would consider purchasing another Apex Nano travel trailer if I were to change my tow vehicle. I would definitely purchase another Apex Nano 187RB if something were to happen to this one and I still had my Ascent as a tow vehicle. We love the feel of this trailer and just about everything about it. It fits us, our tow vehicle, and our lifestyle very well. Ultimately, it is my fault. I had researched purchasing a travel trailer for many, many months before making our purchase. I knew about the faucet spigot problems with the travel trailers in general before making our purchase. Based on the time that I'd spent in several 187 RBs and trying to dry my hands under the spigots, I thought they'd be okay. I was wrong. I missed the defect on the bathroom faucet handle. I missed the mar on the refrigerator door and the fact that the refrigerator door panel was not seated properly. I also missed the fact that the kitchen faucet was not mounted parallel to the sink. I missed noticing that the O in the word nano on the windshield was peeling off on the day I picked it up. I didn't notice that the kitchen window and front campsite window were not fitted properly into their respective openings. It would not have benefited Halet to point out the obvious defects and flaws that I previously noted, even if they had noticed them. All of the defects would have decreased the price I was willing to pay for the trailer. I did tell Norm, the walkthrough fellow, about the missing screw on the access panel under the fuse box. 
He said that he'd replace it, but he didn't. I believe that Halet bears some responsibility for not noticing the leaky kitchen window. They claim to have a device that pressurizes the trailer, and then water can be sprayed on the outside of the windows to see if there are any leaks. I don't believe my trailer was inspected for leaks because it leaked from day one. Also, it rained almost every day in May here in Michigan, and someone at Halet should have noticed the water in puddles on the counter behind the sink. But maybe someone did, and they just didn't tell anyone. They created all of the problems with their choice of design elements, materials selection, component choices, supplier choices, lack of oversight of the workmanship, and overall lack of quality control. Instead of being negative, I'd like to make some suggestions that could, if implemented, create a much better end-user experience. I am not foolish enough to think that they would ever make these changes, as the changes would cost money in either materials, design implementation, man hours, or the combination of all three. Add a battery box cutoff switch so that the battery box does not need to be opened to disconnect the battery wires to eliminate parasitic draw when the trailer is stored for a period of time. Size the window cutouts in the walls to fit the window frames being used. Use a combination bumper and sewer hose holder size that fits larger diameter sewer hose fittings. Thoroughly check for leaks before the unit leaves the factory and repair if necessary. Allow any employee installing a component to reject it if they notice an obvious physical defect. Don't force them to install components with an obvious to the eye defect. Purchase stabilizer jacks from a company that can actually produce them to work well. Mount all of the stabilizer jacks in the same manner following a best practices procedure. Use better entry steps that work easily and that are more stable. If pressed and glued sawdust wood is used in construction, use fasteners that don't rely on putting holes and wood screws into the sawdust wood to hold the panels in place. Clearly mark the outline of where the whole TV backer is located. Use an awning or an awning system that does not trap water in the awning. Select faucet designs that allow people to put their hands under them in the bathroom and large dishes and pans in the sink. Keep the double bowl sink, but provide split sink covers for it. Put the water pump in an accessible place. Add plumbing to the water pump to allow a tube to be inserted into a gallon of RV winterizing antifreeze and pump through the system using the water pump for winterization. When referencing the owner's manual on a placard on the trailer, note that it's only available online and give the URL. Thoroughly inspect the frame for rust and other defects and reject or repaint those that don't come up to a certain standard. That applies to the LP tank holder and spare tire holder as well. Pay attention to the small details like inserting a washer in the black tank flush connector. Double check that the bolts and screws are tight on the sewage system and that the waterline low point drain connections are also tight. Check that all graphics had been adhered to their respective surfaces correctly. Use a kitchen counter flush mounted two burner stove top with a glass top to provide more counter space. Pick up and vacuum the construction debris out of the areas that are to be accessed by removable panels. Add a master light switch by the door so that all lights that have been left in the on position can be turned on when entering the trailer. I especially want to thank my wife who made this adventure come true for us and our granddaughters. Thank you, dear.